The Oregon Ducks have fixed their problems, and they're still 3-0, and and they're ready to make their Big Ten run. Plus, Michigan's making a change at quarterback. Locked on Big Ten starts right now. You are Locked on Big Ten, your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Lockdown Big Ten. I'm Craig Scheman, coming up on 40 years as a sports talk show host and play-by-play announcer. And I want to thank you for making Lockdown Big Ten your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Just visit FanDuel.com to get started. All right, the Ducks are fixed for now. Quarterback changes at Michigan and Wisconsin for different reasons, and we'll have our Tuesday tweets. Got some great ones again. Let's talk about the Oregon Ducks for a minute because a lot of people have been talking about the Ducks all season long. Like, what's wrong with the Ducks? Kind of weird for an undefeated team, but it's been happening. You everydayers here on Lockdown Big Ten know that the storyline for the Ducks has been very interesting, and we love talking about it. All summer long, we talked about the expectation that they were going to enter the Big Ten brand new, quite possibly play Ohio State for a Big Ten championship, get into the expanded 12-team playoff and make a run for a national championship, right? Sound familiar? Sure. We've discussed it, and we weren't alone. The Ducks are talented enough to do all of that. Then the season started. And they're 3-0, and and they're the second-highest-ranked Big Ten team in the AP Top 25, so no problem, right? Business as usual, right? I should also point out that they're ranked ninth. They used to be ranked third. They've been falling, so somebody's been noticing that something isn't exactly right. Now, in college football, people start talking when good teams win, and they don't win by enough points can't just win. Got to win by enough points. We saw this happen in Michigan last year. They weren't covering spreads in September last year. But the old saying goes, good teams win, great teams cover. True or not, that's what people say. In the end, it worked out for Michigan, whether they beat people by the spread or not, or beat teams by the spread or not. And it's probably going to work out for the most part for the Oregon Ducks this year. But admittedly, Ducks fans got a little nervous, right? when they only won their season opener versus Idaho by 10 points. After all, Oregon was favored by 49 and a half points in that game. Only won by 10. All right? Nervous. No need to panic, though, right? It's the beginning of the season. Season openers can be quirky sometimes. Everything's new. Sometimes you just need to iron some stuff out. Maybe you just need that game to iron stuff out. Then they only beat Boise State with a late field goal, 37 to 34, a couple of weeks ago. The Ducks were 17 and a half point favorites at kickoff for that game. Hmm. Autzen, we may have a problem. So, what was going on before this weekend's win versus rival Oregon State? Well, the first two games, the Ducks were breaking in a couple of new starters on the offensive line, right? That takes time. And They gave up more sacks in the first two games than they did the entire season last year. Oops, that's a red flag. They've also had a bunch of drive-killing penalties. Nothing will stop momentum in a drive than a big old penalty on offense and back you up. Now, that may be why, you know, you look at quarterback Dylan Gabriel and look at his numbers. It's like, his stats are fantastic. What's going on? Why is the offense bogging down? Well, penalties, occasional sack, and they were fumbling. Talk about killing drives. I mean, the Ducks' first two games, they fumbled four times and they lost three of them. So you add all that up on offense and things weren't really clicking. All of these things we talk about were momentum killers. Now let's look at the defense. They're loaded. They're loaded on paper anyway. They were just giving up too many bad plays. For example, they allowed Boise State's Ashton Genty to rush for 192 yards and three touchdowns. Now, between you and me, Genty's pretty good. I think he's an next level running back, but the Ducks shouldn't get gashed like that by anybody on the ground, especially with all that talent they have up front. So going into this past weekend's game against Oregon State, obviously the Ducks had some work to do. 
And it's tough to fix yourself and get right going into a game against a rival, on the road, against a team and a fan base that hates you, basically because you left them behind in the defunct, now resurrecting Pac-12, whatever we're calling it, for the greener pastures of the Big Ten. All right, even under ideal circumstances, fans over at Oregon State didn't like Oregon. So it was it'd be a hard game to kind of fix stuff. And that game was 22 to 14 at the half. So concerns were still looming in the back of everybody's kind of simmering below the surface a little bit. But all's well, it ends well, right? And the Ducks prevailed and they covered, by the way. They ended up winning the game 49 to 14. The Ducks put up 546 yards of offense. They had a nice balanced attack with 306 yards passing and 240 yards on the ground. So everything seemed to be okay. And the offensive line did not give up a single sack. So check, that was improved on. The team only committed three penalties for 36 yards and they committed zero turnovers. Check and check. All right, things are looking good, right? They did fumble once, but they got, they recovered it. And the defense, by the way, held Anthony Hankerson to 57 yards rushing and 3.8 yards per carry. And quarterback Giovanni McCoy only threw for 172 yards and zero touchdown passes. So you could check a lot of boxes here. Dan Lanning can check a lot of those coaches' boxes that he worries about. Things that the Ducks needed to fix going into the Oregon State game and, of course, springboarding themselves into the Big Ten portion of the schedule. Now, they got a bye week this week. So after trying to figure out things week one and week two and feeling pretty good about the week three game against Oregon State, Dan Lanning said they felt full, like they kind of reached not so much the potential, but reached where they needed to, you know, needed to go in that game, felt real good about it. So they got the bye week here to digest all that, heal up a little bit, rest up a little bit, maybe work on a few more things just to get consistency going here and get things dialed in. And next week, after the bye, they open the Big Ten portion of the schedule with a visit to the Rose Bowl to take on UCLA. By the way, that UCLA team has a lot of problems themselves. So should be okay for Oregon for that game. I like, uh, I like their chances to win and cover. Then they host a Michigan State team that has an impressive Big Ten road win on the resume already. They won at Maryland. Keep in mind, though, the interesting storylines here. Michigan's Michigan State's head coach, Jonathan Smith, and started quarterback Aiden Childs. They came from Oregon State. So they know what this Oregon-Oregon State thing is all about. And they're looking forward to being some spoilers. So they take care of that one. Oregon does. Then it's the big one. Then it's the big one that we all circled a long time ago, October 12th. Ohio State comes calling, comes to Autzen Stadium. This will be the first true measuring stick, whatever you want to call it, for both teams, for both teams. So this is the showdown that we've, we've been waiting for. So I think Oregon's in good shape right now. They were in okay shape before. They were winning. We still had some things to figure out. So if they do what they did against Oregon State moving forward, a couple more games, keep things going with consistency, then Ohio State comes in, and we'll see what happens. And we'll see where everybody is at that point. Can't wait for that one. That's the big one for sure. Hey, if you're new or if you've been watching and maybe you're not new, but you haven't subscribed yet, I'm going to ask you to subscribe. You just click the little subscribe button, and it's free. It will always be free. It's not like free for a few months and then they come up. It's always free and uh, keeps you and me locked into Big Ten stuff on a regular basis because we're out here every day on Lockdown Big Ten. So uh, we'd appreciate having you subscribe. And then if you don't mind, share. Word of mouth. Tell a friend that you know is a Big Ten fan that, hey, Lockdown Big Ten's out here every day. This is a pretty cool podcast. We would really appreciate it. So subscribe and share and follow and like Lockdown Big Ten for free. Wherever you get your podcast, that way you get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. Uh, don't forget our website, talkbig10.com. We have all of our podcasts there. You can go back and catch a few that you may have missed, maybe our uh, live one over the weekend. It's on tape now, it's not live. And uh, you can check that out and also buy merchandise for your favorite team at talkbig10.com. Always appreciate it if you uh, want to check that out and take care of that. Uh, again, that's talkbig10.com. All right, lots to do here, and we got some quarterback news at Michigan. They're making a change. 
Wisconsin's going to make a change. Two very different reasons. We will take care of all that in one minute right here on Locked On Big Ten. I want to tell you about a new partner here at Locked On Big Ten. All right? It's Roy. Roy, R-O-Y. All you Big Ten fans. If you haven't heard about Roy, let me tell you. It stands for Return on You. It's a new platform that lets you, the fans, get involved in nil. Name, image, and likeness like never before by actually making contributions directly to your favorite athletes. If you want your school to keep rolling, you want to you want to help out financially, you can. You can. That's how much things have changed in college football right now. You can directly support your school, players at your school. So uh, that's what makes Roy different here. It allows fans to directly back their favorite college athletes. You can play a key role in how good your favorite team is. They have, uh, then you get exclusive content access uh, when fans contribute to a successful campaign. They can receive access to exclusive content from the athlete, their announcement decisions, the behind the scenes stuff, footage, all that kind of stuff. No risk contributions. Fans' contributions are securely held and are only distributed if the athlete makes the decision that aligns with your support. And you can engage with athletes on their NIL journey by using Roy. All right. You can uh, download Roy for iOS or Android and enter the referral code locked on, and you'll automatically be entered into a sweepstakes to win $5,000 cash for you. Visit joinroy.com for additional details. No purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Get the uh, Roy app for iOS or Android and start making an impact on your favorite team. Again, the referral code locked on and an opportunity to win $5,000 cash. Visit joinroy.com for more details. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited. Get off the sidelines and into the nil game with Roy. Well, thank you for making Locked On Big Ten your first listen each and every day, especially every dayers out there. Meanwhile, be sure to subscribe. Share, follow, and like Locked On Big Ten. You can subscribe right here on YouTube right now if you're watching on video. And don't forget our website, talkbig10number10.com. Now, after three lackluster performances, a quarterback for Michigan, Davis Warren will be replaced by Alex Orgy, according to head coach Sheryl Moore. He made this announcement on Monday. Warren threw three interceptions versus Arkansas State in the Wolverines' 10-point win at home on Saturday. In fact, he threw for just 122 yards and no touchdown passes. Orgy did play in the game and threw a touchdown pass. And he also ran three times for 27 yards. So Orgy's going to be the guy. Alex Orgy is going to be the new starter for the Michigan Wolverines. I mean, he expected Orgy to be the starter all summer long going into the season, but then more surprised a lot of people by naming Warren the starter just before the season opener against Fresno State. Now, Orgy obviously isn't the best passer in the world, but he is a good, strong athlete who can run, and uh, he's going to be facing a much improved USC defense. I'm a little worried about this from Michigan standpoint, and Michigan and uh, USC is chomping at the bit for this game. I tell you that USC's offense puts a lot of points on the scoreboard, and the question will be if Michigan can keep pace with a slow, methodical running attack that they employ. If Michigan falls behind early, uh, this game is going to be very similar to the Texas game, I think, a couple of weeks ago. No matter who's a quarterback, Michigan has no vertical explosiveness to its offense right now. In fact, Michigan ranks 99th in the country in scoring offense, and they have the 121st passing offense in the country. And their six interceptions this season has them ranked 129th in the country. These are not good numbers. And few would argue that change is needed, but does Orgy have the ability to lift this offense all by himself right now? I'm not so sure about that. Uh, meanwhile, the USC Trojans, this is, this is the one they've had marked on their, uh, their calendar for a long time. Um, also, other Michigan news. You remember the Arkansas State game tight end, uh, Colston Loveland, left the game. Looked like an arm problem. Sheryl Moore would not commit to the media on Monday whether Loveland will play against USC. Now, Moore likes to keep things tight to the vest and keep other teams guessing. But he says up to the doctors right now. And, of course, Loveland, huge 6'5", 245-pound target, leads the team in receptions right now with 19 and receiving yards with 187. He's got a touchdown. So 
They need him in that lineup. And um, again, especially against a USC Trojan defense that has much improved and has been uh, been pretty good this year. Uh, USC's been good on both sides of the ball this year. And um, it's a stripe out game at the big house. So they're ready for this. And USC wants to make a big Big Ten statement in this game for sure. A reminder, we here at Lockdown Big Ten will go live on our YouTube channel like we do every Saturday night after the big game of the night, except this is a little earlier, okay? USC at Michigan is a 3.30 Eastern on CBS. Not a night game. It's a late afternoon game. So we're going to air live on Locked On uh, about 6.45-ish, 7 o'clock-ish Eastern time. There'll be 3.45 or 4 o'clock Pacific time if you're watching out there in USC Trojan land. But right after the final game, we'll come live here. Again, this is earlier than we normally do this. So uh, we pick, piggyback, we're going to piggyback this game. Have immediate reaction on the game, your comments, my comments, and we'll have everything that has happened throughout the day already in the Big Ten and maybe a quick preview on the night games that will be coming up around the Big Ten. Meanwhile, talk about the quarterback change at Michigan. It's going to be one at Wisconsin and not the good kind because the Badgers starting quarterback, Tyler Van Dyke, suffered a season-ending knee injury early in the game against Alabama on Saturday. Had an MRI on Sunday morning, confirmed the prognosis. One ESPN report said it was a complete tear of the ACL in the right knee, and that could be the end of the fifth-year senior's college career unless he gets uh, a pass from the NCAA to come back for another year. Uh, back up, uh, Braden Locke. Braden, we've talked about Braden Locke a lot here since spring ball. So Braden Locke will be the starter moving forward. He and Van Dyke were in a quarterback battle in the spring. It appeared to be more Van Dyke's job as the summer went on, obviously, as he was the season starter. But I think Braden Locke is very capable. Now, he had to come in under adverse conditions as a backup last week against a pretty awesome Alabama team. But I think Braden Locke is, is a good backup quarterback. and I, He's impressed me. I wondered if he would even get the starting job because – during spring ball, the deal was Braden Locke knew the offense and uh, Van Dyke didn't, and he was a step slower because he was still learning it. But that all worked itself out. I think I think Braden Locke, I think the Badgers are in decent hands here for having a uh, backup come in and start playing for them. So, plus, they've got a bye week this week to kind of work out the transition a little bit. And then Wisconsin opens up the Big Ten schedule September 28th at the L.A. Coliseum to take on the USC Trojans. The Trojans are everywhere these days. Take it on everybody. It's part of the new Big Ten schedule, if you will. All right, you know what we like to do on Tuesdays, unless you're new here, we do Tuesday tweets. I grab some great tweets, colorful tweets, all there. On You can follow me at TalkBig10, by the way, on Twitter. Uh, you got a good tweet out there? I'm going to put it on the program every Tuesday. We'll bounce around the league and see what is up with that. That's all coming up next right here on Locked on Big Ten. FanDuel. Sports are fun. They're more fun with FanDuel. Give you a little adrenaline rush. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. We have something a little different for you here now through September 22nd. All FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel any time. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sports book. So Tuesday night action. I like the Orioles over the Giants in Major League Baseball and the Dodgers over the Marlins. Take the over on the Red Sox at Rays. I expect a lot of runs in that one. The Mets will beat the Nationals. Take the under in a pitching battle between the Astros and the Padres. And I like the Yankees to beat the Mariners. How about that? All that. You can do that and more. Whatever you want. At fanduel.com slash locked on. Fanduel, download America's number one sports book. All right, it is time for Tuesday tweets, and we're going to put this on full screen. Uh, for those of you listening on audio only, we'll describe what's going on as best we can. Got some good ones out here I want to share with you, and we'll put them on the board. We'll start it off with a tweet from the Big Ten Network. And it says, any first since Marcus Mariota is something. Here's a picture of Dylan Rayola during his uh, game Saturday night. Another Huskers win. And 
for Rayola, the true freshman coming in, 70% completion in each of his first three games. The last one to do that was uh, Heisman quarterback Marcus Mariota back in 2012. How about that? That's a good stat. Anytime you can compare it to him, Mariota, right? And let's see here. This is from at uh, Black Shirts, one of the coolest photos from Saturday night. Uh, Dylan Rayola uh, will exchange part of a pregame ceremony with uh, some military and American flag right there. It's a good looking picture. And here we go from at PFF College. Picture of Dylan Gabriel, all looking good in that Oregon uniform. This is Dylan Gabriel dominated versus Oregon State. And then down below it says, He's their best player, and in week three, he showed why he is a Heisman contender. That from Dalton Wasserman on Dylan Gabriel. There you go. By the way, this was cool. Uh, as you know, teams get a police escort to the stadium whenever they're uh, out and about. This is from at Oregon Ducks SI. For those wanting close-ups of the custom police helmets, Oregon gave their police escorts. So Oregon Duck helmets, everything but the face mask. That's cool. That'll stand out. Be able to see that coming down the road. Speaking of the Oregon Ducks, this is my favorite. This is at Oregon underscore updates. And it is, uh, you're, you're getting dog walked on Saturday. This is the, uh, in Oregon, not the Oregon Duck mascot, but an Oregon Duck mascot. Uh, I'll tell you, they took on the beavers over the weekend. He's got the beavers on a, a beaver on a leash, taking them for a walk. That's right. And then they ended up beating them. Uh, by a rather large margin. Here is from at Blue by 90, Shiro Moore announcing that Alex Orgy will start this week versus USC. There's a good look at Orgy. Good physique, strong athlete. If he can complete a few passes, maybe he can make something happen. Be the starter, week four versus USC. Uh, here's one from at Barstool, U of M. Oh, how we miss him. It is a picture of last year's offensive line and i see roman wilson in there the receiver yeah missing a lot of guys from last year no doubt by the way uh from a couple of years ago there's uh aiden hutchinson at wolverine chronicle uh, the picture of uh hutchinson and nico collins in michigan uniforms but aiden hutchinson leads the nfl in sacks and nico collins leads the league in receiving yards hutchinson with the lions and collins of course with the texans hashtag Pro blue, not go blue, pro blue, since they're in the pros now. Here is, oh, they're doing a stripe out. A little reminder, if you have a ticket and you're sitting in these, this is the reminder how to do the stripe out. Michigan's never done a stripe out before. They've done a maze out. They haven't done a stripe out. So here's what a ticket looks like. And it's an overhead shot of the stadium and uh, all the sections and what color you're supposed to wear. You see the whole student section in the corner, all maze. Everybody else striped. Here's one I can't wait for. We'll do a we'll preview this later on this week here on Lockdown Big Ten. This is from at Black Shirts, the second tweet we've used from them here today. Game four, Friday Night Lights. We've got two top 25 ranked teams in the Big Ten going head to head on a Friday night. Number 24, Illinois, and number 22, Nebraska. This is Lincoln, Nebraska, Memorial Stadium, 400th consecutive sellout. That's awesome. This Friday night, seven o'clock central, eight o'clock eastern. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be great. This is funny. This is from at Ben Stevens. Uh, we use him a lot. It is a long list of the 18-team Big Ten standings. And it says here, if the college football season ended today, Indiana and Michigan State would be playing for a Big Ten championship. Both teams want to know. The top two teams in the division, in the conference, play in the college football, play in the Big Ten uh, championship game. And uh, IU beat UCLA handily. And Michigan State has a road win. Uh, both teams with road wins. And Michigan State had the win at Maryland. That's right. Maryland, Indiana, Big Ten championship for football now. <laughs> Here is from at College Football on Fox, the new AP poll that came out early this week. Do you agree with the rankings? Quick look at it. Now, Georgia only won by a point. Texas looked good. Quinn Ewers got hurt. Arch Manning is going to play. And uh, by the way, I didn't realize how fast he was till he started running on that long touchdown. But anyway, Texas moves into number one. 
Georgia Falls one, despite the win to number two, and then Ohio State at three. We still have, like last week, six of the first seven spots, SEC teams, if it weren't for Ohio State there at number three. The U, Cam Ward of Miami, moving up to number eight, ahead of number nine, Oregon from the Big Ten, and number 10, Penn State from the Big Ten, and Southern Cal at number 11. So nine, 10, and 11, all Big Ten teams, with Ohio State up there at number three. Also, Seven teams total cracking the top 25. Got Michigan at 18. They fell one spot after their win over Arkansas State. And Nebraska in there at number 22. And Illinois at number 24, just like we mentioned. How about that? Seven teams in the top 25. Pretty solid. And that's a look at our Tuesday tweets. Hope you enjoy that. Send me a tweet. Maybe I'll put you on here. At Talk Big 10, number 10. All right, uh, again, we're going to talk about the USC Trojans tomorrow a little bit more as they're getting ready to start Big Ten play against Michigan and what they expect. They're, they're on the rise right now. Maybe they'll be in there in the Big Ten championship in their first year. Maybe Oregon. I don't know. Still looks like Ohio State, if we're going to be honest, right? Many ways for you to interact with me. Hit me up on Twitter at TalkBig10, number 10. Don't forget our website, talkbig Ten number 10com TalkBig10.com. All of our podcasts go there. This one will go there right as soon as we're done. You can watch others, and you can buy merchandise from your favorite team, shirts and hats and T-shirts and all that stuff, talkbig10.com. Whatever you do, whatever you do, please be sure to subscribe. Just click it, and it's free forever. Subscribe, share, follow, and like. Lockdown Big Ten on your favorite podcast app, and you'll get the latest episode of Lockdown Big Ten as soon as it becomes available each and every day. Video and audio both come out at 6 a.m. Eastern. That's 3 o'clock Pacific. If you're one of the four West Coast teams, it's up there ready to go before you head to work and hit all that West Coast traffic. So I want to thank you for making Lockdown Big Ten your first listen each and every day. You can go back and check out some more on our website and maybe a second listen. Enjoy our friends at Lockdown College Football and their podcasts each and every day. Lockdown College Football is available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, let's talk some Trojans. We'll have our power rankings tomorrow. All that is coming up. Thanks for the visit here today. Can't wait till we talk again tomorrow. I'm Craig Scheman for Lockdown Big Ten. See you next time.